Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. The new Mountain Royals DLC has lots of new mechanics for the Georgians and Armenians, but probably the most curious is the new mule cart, replacing the more traditional camps. In this video, we're going to look at this particular unit, building, something in between, whatever it is, and answer some of the immediate questions that come to mind when trying it out. To start simply, it costs the regular camps 100 wood, but has a small 20 food cost added onto that. It's built in 25 seconds, same as a lumber camp and a little faster than a mining camp, but obviously it's all in the same ballpark. For all intents and purposes, this is a building, counting as such for advancing to feudal, found with buildings in the scenario editor, and takes bonus damage from anti-building units, not anti-cavalry. So the mule is really a bit misleading and doesn't give you any info about the building, except that it can move. Now, this is almost a universal drop-off point, where you can drop off wood, gold, stone, and even hunted meat from hunters specifically. This has the advantage of being able to straddle two different resources, like gold and a woodline temporarily, or could be used on black forest for example, to collect from a group of boar or deer instead of a mill, and then have those villagers move onto wood later. It's quite flexible in that way, though of course you have to remember the food drop-off is linked only to hunters, and it's important not to try to use it on berries, farms, fishing, or anything like that. And in those cases, you still need the mill like usual. In terms of upgrades, remember they're plain old buildings, affected by town watch, masonry etc, and treadmill crane. To be explicit, they are not affected in any way by blacksmith or cavalry upgrades. One odd thing to know though is they are affected by wheelbarrow and handcart, basically just to make them as fast as villagers throughout the game, and move them as a group without slowing anyone down. Tying their speed to villagers makes a lot of sense, and I'm glad they didn't overlook that. Now each of the two civilizations with the mule cart get a bit of a distinct flavor with it, which we'll look at now. The first is the Armenians, whose mule carts are a bit cheaper, sort of like a weaker version of the Japanese camp bonus. But on top of that, the mule cart techs are 25% more effective. This does not mean masonry, etc., but the economy techs you research at the mule cart itself. Essentially, each upgrade is doing a bit more for Armenians than for other civilizations, and I tested out what exactly that means in practice, and found it leads to about 8% faster lumberjacks when all is said and done with a reasonably efficient woodbine. Of course, they're not 25% better as it's only the upgrades that are enhanced, not the base collection rate. Considering Celts though are lacking the final wood upgrade, plus you save on the wood having to rebuild lumber camps, Georgians likely have just the outright best late game lumberjacks in the game. Of course, that means it's extra important though to prioritize those wood upgrades. Likewise, gold and stone mining upgrades are extra good as well, with the implication being that wood, gold, and stone income are pretty good in the mid to late game, while food isn't really affected. Of course, any wood bonus becomes a food bonus easily enough by adding more farms, so even with infantry or cavalry, there should be a nice spillover effect to help those, though archers and their archer unique unit are probably a little more directly targeted. On the other side, Georgians start with a mule cart for free though lack 50 food from their starting resources. This is kind of a bad trade initially, as while it is cheaper than a cart, you don't really need a mule cart right away as you collect food. This doesn't mean it's useless though, as it has some scouting potential, if you're able to manage effectively two scouts on top of any sheep scouting, though keep in mind it can't directly convert any sheep it passes, and just reveals them for your scout cavalry to collect later. On the flip side, lacking that 50 starting food subjectively really adds to the demand of their start. You have to force drop off shepherds to sustain villagers after the third one comes out, and I'd recommend putting several extra villagers on food early, or luring a quick boar. You still start with 200 wood, which is all you need for a mill and four houses, while you begin with your lumber camp, so wood really isn't a necessity in Dark Age, strictly speaking. In fact, Georgians have a lot of potential for a quick uptime thanks to the starting mule, but people who struggle with a clean Dark Age I think will have a bit of extra inefficiency. Of course, the Georgians late game more than makes up for that in the long run. Now, one major drawback of mule carts is that they're actually pretty weak. Compared to regular camps, they have quite low pierce armor and HP, at least as of their balance at the moment. This means they take 100 shots from an archer versus 600 for a regular camp, and scouts or men at arms can likewise tear right through them pretty quickly with their lower HP and just one melee armor. Of course, offsetting that, you can actually run away with them, and they can even garrison, meaning they can escape most things, besides maybe being surrounded by a large group of cavalry. So if being a little weak is their main disadvantage, let's talk about their advantages, which are numerous. 
To start with, they can relocate, moving as fast as your villagers, meaning once you use up a wood line, you can send them elsewhere without that initial 100 wood cost for a new camp. Maybe the best part about them though is they automatically move with your wood line. If that sounds pretty great, trust me, it is. When you build it, it immediately searches for a nearby target tree just like a villager. But instead of chopping it like a villager, it stands a few tiles away. If that tree is removed by a lumberjack, the cart then automatically searches out for the next closest tree and moves a little toward it. The long-term effect of this is over time, it basically follows your lumberjacks. Likewise, after each tree is cut, the villager drops off the last wood they're carrying at the cart and then searches for the next one nearby. So the cart and lumberjacks in a way almost follow each other. As an example, here I haven't given any orders after building the cart and you can see it sticks pretty close the whole time to its group of villagers. Of course, you can override this behavior if you wanted by telling the cart to move to a specific spot. And in that case, it'll just wait there. But generally I found in my few games already, it's best to just leave it alone and let it sort itself out. The exception is if there's some confusion over which resource it should gather from, or if it's not right beside a wood line when you build it. And in those cases, it might be a good idea to just confirm it knows which resource it's following by manually tasking it like you would a villager. Likewise, when moving it to a new location, you can just simply right click a tree with all your villagers and the cart selected, and it'll generally sort itself out pretty well. This is all way smarter than I think it had to be. And designing it this way, not only do you save the obvious 100 wood to rebuild camps, but even keep a high level of efficiency throughout the whole game, making Armenians with better lumber camp upgrades just hands down a wood industrial powerhouse. Now, as good as this looks, there is a slight drawback here. In my opinion, the mule cart stands what I feel is sometimes too close to the wood line or gold it's targeting. I've noticed when you have especially 10 or more villagers, but even sometimes fewer, using a single mule cart, you seem to get trapped villagers somewhat regularly, where it'll really try to get into the wood line itself more than is probably ideal. In this example, three different female villagers got stuck, one for over a minute and the other two for over 30 seconds until enough trees around them were removed. Where villagers' internal logic will sometimes get them out of each other's way, the mule cart really is stubborn as a mule and will not move for villagers. This isn't an early game issue with four or five villagers per cart, and if you notice this is happening a lot, you can manually set the mule cart back a few tiles to give an easier flow of villagers, or just make more mule carts around a particularly saturated gold or wood line. I won't dwell on this too much though, as it's something that might get addressed later. And one future workaround they could introduce is the option of a close or far following distance to the resource that you could toggle on the mule. My idea there being once you start to oversaturate a resource, you could switch to a following distance that doesn't squish the villagers in as much. So that's the newly introduced mule cart. Honestly, it works a lot better than I was originally expecting, and its relatively small collision size on top of very smart behavior makes it quite smooth to use in practice. Georgians in particular, having a fortified church nearby they can garrison into, makes your wood lines scattered around the map basically unraidable, while also passively boosting their efficiency. Likewise, Armenians are getting supercharged villagers by way of better upgrades. So while the mule cart itself has undeniable advantages, the bonuses stacking on top of it make it even more impressive. Now, while this isn't the most rigorous test, just to give a vague sense of the benefit of everything we looked at, running a 15 minute comparison in Castle Age with Georgians versus Britons, even without any of the extra bonuses, like Fortified Church or Armenian bonus at play, Georgians collected about 4% more wood just by using the mule cart, which kept their efficiency up. Of course, by the end, the Britain's woodline could probably use a new lumber camp pretty soon as well, and factoring that cost then put the difference at more like 9%. This is probably the sort of comparison I want to look at in more detail down the road when I can really dive into it over a weekend, but it at least highlights that the mule cart is a pretty good civ bonus all on its own. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.